Hello, hello, and welcome to Spindle TV. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, we got another class. Uh, glad that we had such a great response to last week's class and everything. Uh, I'm going to try to do more of those type of little tip type training videos uh, in classes and everything uh, to cover certain you know ways you would approach some things. Uh, I think that turned out very well. Got a lot of positive comments, so thank you all for that. Um, tonight we are going to look at uh, modeling, but we're also going to look at the molding toolpath uh, in the VCarve Desktop Pro and Aspire. We're going to look at modeling and Aspire, but we're also going to look at the molding toolpath and see how we can achieve the same results, uh, but we have different approaches. Uh, what we're going to be doing is, uh, this is a very basic uh, box uh, body design, but these curved profiles, so this entire box, including the feet and everything that was carved, uh, you know, designed in Vetric and carved, but this profile um, on the sides of the box and all, we're going to come up with some decorative, more decorative ones and things like that. But uh, we're going to talk about how to use the molding tool path to create this cut, uh, cuts like this as well as the modeling toolpath in Aspire. But for those of you that don't have Aspire, you know, we want to look at how we would approach that as well. Now, um, just make sure uh, that my audio is good and all that. Y'all can hear me. Let me know. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the software. Now, tonight I'm going to be working. Hey, Steven Camaro and everybody. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Tonight, uh, we're going to be working in Aspire, uh, but we're going to be using the modeling tools in Aspire, but we're also going to be using the molding toolpath, which is, you know, the same throughout Desktop Pro and Aspire. So uh, the, the, the stuff that we talk about will apply to uh, everyone and everything. So with that being said, let's go over and get on uh, camera number three and let's get me over there as well and let's put me down in the bottom left here wonderful 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 all right all right so audio is good loud and clear great wonderful all right so we can get there um now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our job. Uh, and normally when I'm cutting my uh, uh, boxes and my box sides and stuff, and let's go back over to me real quick. When I'm cutting my box sides and all, I normally cut it out of one long board. I do all the cutting. And then uh, I'll take that board over to my miter saw to cut the miters. But we're also going to look at how to approach miters and stuff in the Vetric software for those of you that may not have a, uh, a miter saw. But um, we're going to generally kind of create the piece of molding that's where that would create the box sides. And then you would cut that down to make your box and glue it together and all that stuff. We're going to look at making the feet, uh, you know, some decorative feet. And we're going to look at making the lids. And uh, the approach, we're going to look at different design style uh, approaches and things uh, so with that being said uh, coming back over to the uh, Vetric software uh, my width the length of my board I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, work with uh, let's see here of course the one time I don't have a tape measure Nine and nine is 18, uh, six and six is 12. Uh, so, uh, eight, nine, 10, 30 inches. So we'll go 30 inches. Um, I'll figure that out in a minute. And the box height. So uh, I usually, I tend to work with about a three inch tall box height. Uh, but you know, this, imagine you could scale it up to whatever size you wanted, right? Uh, now we are doing, as far as the joinery of the box, this is kind of, uh, basically focusing on a mitered box, mitered joints and everything. 
uh, versus like a dovetail box or finger joint box and things like that. It's a whole nother class, a whole nother video. Uh, so we're, we're looking at mitered box uh, design in the parts. So I'm going to go uh, with a three inch uh, here. And generally my box sides, um, I don't like them too bulky, uh, but these are, um, about half inch bear with me a moment this is when you need a tape measure ladies and gentlemen uh, they're about half inch box size so um, we'll go ahead and go with that but uh, you can make them uh, however you want all right and so uh, I will be working off the machine bed because the whole surface is going to get milled off uh, for this. So I want to be able to touch off on my waste board for my Z0 position for the different tool paths. And I am going to be working from the uh, bottom left corner. But you could work, you know, from the center or however you want to set it up. Um, now, I am actually going to back out of this and uh, I'm going to hold my shift key down on this one because I am working inspired. I am going to be building models throughout this class. So I do want to work in a higher resolution. So let me close this. Um, bear with me a second. I need these vectors. Let me export these out really quick. Export as a DXF. Playing around drawing earlier before this. Okay, file close. No. Okay, I'm going to hold the shift key down and create a new file. And we're going to go with 30 inches by 3 inches by 0 0.5 machine bed, bottom left corner. And I'm going to work in an extremely high resolution. <clears throat> and there we go. Okay, now. When it comes to whether we're working with the molding tool path, like a two rail sweep, I'm sorry, the molding uh, tools in Aspire two rail sweep or the molding tool path, we need a profile, right? We need a profile that uh, is going to be swept across no matter which way we do it. If we're using the molding tool path and all the software, Vetric Desktop Pro or Aspire or the modeling tool path, we need a profile. We need a shape. And so generally I will start out with a uh, rectangle and this rectangle will have the height of three inches uh, and it will have, or I'm sorry, the width of three inches. Height, I said it right the first time, height of three inches and the width is going to be uh, half an inch, right? Because that's how thick my material is. Okay, so let's create that there. Now, when we are creating the uh, molding profile, we don't need uh, the bottom or the back side of the vector that we're drawing. So we're going to go into node editing and we're going to remove the span, delete the span for that back side. We only need the three sides here. Okay, all right. Now, once we have this, and I'll go ahead and I'll align it um, center of my material, but I'm going to move it. I'll just use my arrow key right now. Being lazy today, I'm going to just use my arrow key to slide it down to this end. Wonderful. One other thing that we're going to need is we're either going to need two rails, if we're going to use the molding tools in a spire, or one rail if we're going to use the molding tool path in any of the three software. So I'll draw all three of those. So I'm going to draw a line and on my line, it's going to snap here to here. So that'll be my first line and at the bottom here to here. Okay. My second line, that'll be for the two rail sweep if we use that. And then I'm also going to need a line straight down the right side, always the right side of the object. Uh, and that'll be for the molding tool path, right? Always on the right side because it sweeps it across from right to left. Cool. 
Now, on our molding, uh, basically like the uh, molding that I have uh, on that box, very simply in node editing here, uh, I would create a node a little ways down and put and sort of point and um, it just goes right into a sweep there. And this span gets turned into a Bezier curve and it has a full body curve, you know, something to that effect, right? But what I'd like to do, we're going to kind of dress it up a little bit. So we're going to change that up some. All right. We're going to change that up to, to create our profile. So that was that basic box style that I showed you a moment ago. Um, but let's go ahead and undo that. And what I'd like to do on this is I would like to uh, take this and create another node. Let's come up a little bit here insert a point and I want this to be a straight line so I'm going to right click on it and make it a line again so I want that to be a straight line I want up here to be a straight line and then I want the middle between those two nodes to be a span uh, pff, it is a span I'm an idiot a uh, busy a curve <laughs> all right now um, I would like a little bit of a step back before it curves, right? So what I'm gonna do is it's going to have this lip and there's gonna be another little lip back here. So I'm going to just come down and insert another point here. And again, I'm gonna right click and make that a line. And I'm gonna take that point and drag it up here. And what I want is I wanna make sure that these two nodes are aligned, okay? Make sure they're aligned. And so I'm gonna select this node here. That's what I want to align to. And let me kind of get down here so you all can see it. This is the node I want to align to, and this one is the one I want to align. So I'll select it last, and I'm gonna go up and down. So to dram dramatize this a little bit, um, uh, I'm gonna hit the letter Y, it is in alignment. But imagine if it wasn't, let's bring that down a little. If I select this node first, this node second, I hit the letter Y on the keyboard, it will bring them into alignment, okay? Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just uh, throw another point right here and I'm gonna bring this point back. And again, I want this to be a line, so I'm gonna make it a line. And I'm going to select this node and this node and hit the letter Y on the keyboard to make sure that's straight. But now I need to align these two nodes coming up and down here. So I wanna select this one first. That's what I want to align to. This one down here last, hold the shift key. And this is X now, I'm moving left and right. So I'm gonna hit X to bring that into alignment. And again, I want this to be a line for right now, just for the moment. I want it straight in a row, okay? So I have kind of like a lip at the top and the lip at the bottom. They're not the same height. You know, I could make them the same height if I want, but I want a little bit of a difference uh, in that. Uh, if I wanted them to be the same height, then I'm gonna use my guidelines to help me lay out things. And for those of you that are new and don't know what guidelines are, in your rulers, in your software, you have the ability to put your mouse up there and click and drag out a guideline. And if I, you know, snap a guideline to here, uh, to the bottom of my vector, and I said, okay, I want to create another guideline a quarter inch up or a half inch up or something, I would right click on it, and I would be creating a relative guide, and I'm going up, so it's a positive number, and I would go 0 0.25, and I would click create new guide, and it would create that new guide a quarter of an inch up. Okay, and so, you know, we would have that, uh, that now I could bring my nodes up to there if I wanted that quarter inch bottom. Now, currently right now, if I were to measure where I placed those nodes, uh, this bottom lip has a height of a little over a 16th of an inch tall, okay? 
Now, I would like that to be a little bit more, so I'm going to change it to an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch at the bottom. So let's do that. Let's take and um, I'm going to right click on my guideline here and say I want a relative guide one eighth of an inch up. Okay. And uh, relative guide, sorry. One eighth of an inch up, not an absolute, relative, and make sure there's a decimal in there, 0.125, create. And then all I have to do is come back into my profile in node editing mode, and I can just grab these two nodes and, <laughs> grab these nodes and pull them up and snap them into place on that line so I have an eighth inch lip, simple enough. So we're using our guideline um, to, get that eighth of an inch. Now I'm gonna, now I can take this guideline and drag it back up into my ruler and it's gone now. And up here, if I were to measure this one, I don't want this one to be too big, uh, but let me measure it vertically from here to here. We're about 0.11, so we're just under an eighth. Uh, and, um, that's fine for me, or I could be more specific and say, okay, I want it to be an eighth or a quarter or what have you. Let's go ahead and make it an eighth just for kicks and giggles. So I'm going to take a guideline and snap it to here. Right click on it. And this time on the relative guide, it's going to be a negative number because I need a guide made going down. So I'm going to put a negative in here and create that guide. And once again, I can come in with my node editing. I'm going to select these nodes and just pull them straight down to there. Okay. All right. So that's enough of that. Let's get rid of that. Guidelines are wonderful tools uh, to, I'm going to go view, delete all guides. They're wonderful tools to help with layout and stuff. Now, how far do I want it to kind of recess back? Well, there's gonna be a little bit of a curve to the center area. So I do want it to kind of recess back so when that curve is formed, um, that there's still a little bit of a reveal on those two lips. So back in node editing, I'm gonna select these two nodes here and I'm just going to eyeball it right now. I'm using the le left arrow key and I'm just gonna move that back a little bit. Okay, so I'm just moving that back. Now, notice here I have an extra node. I don't want that extra node there, so I'm going to delete that point. I just strike A to B, point A to B. So I've got that. Now, this line here I will turn into a busy A curve because I do want to curve the body uh, in some way or fashion. Now, I may just want, instead of a curve, I may just want an arc to where I have a slight bow in the center here, you know, um, because I'm going to end up, we're going to put some other elements on this here uh, when we do the molding and stuff. And this is kind of where uh, molding shines a little bit over the modeling tool path. But, you know, we're going to put a little bit of a decorative element in this. Uh, so just kind of figure out what body shape that you want. And I'm going to go with a, a subtle arc for right now. Now, on my arc, uh, you know, I could have, I could uh, implement some other curves or beads or round circles or something into this shape to create whatever body profile I want on my box, whatever profile that I want. Um, and uh, that really kind of just depends on, you know, what you're going with as far as your style goes and all. Now, if I take a guideline, if I take a guideline from the left menu and drag it out and snap it to the end of my guides here, you can see that my arc passes the my my two endpoints a bit, and I kind of don't want that. I want I want my lips, uh, those top and bottom lips, to protrude past the arc a little, uh, and so what I can do is I can simply, you know, go back into node editing. And once again, I can grab these two nodes here 
and I'm just going to use my left arrow key. I could actually, um, I could actually, you know, drag that, grab it by one of the nodes and drag it and then type in a measurement, how far I want it to move back and stuff. But right now this is all just visual kind of layout and, and everything. <clears throat> now, um, if I wanted, uh, you know, some kind of step or something in here, uh, you know, where it has another inner step that comes down to and then arcs or whatever, think about whatever profile or shape that you want, uh, you can do. And if I was doing kind of another, like a step or something, I could take and I'll just draw a rectangle to do this. Let's say that I want a rectangle that has... Um, a height of let's go 0.1 here and I want the same thing down at the bottom here and I want them in alignment and all so all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the middle of I'm going to use my line tool I'm going to find the middle of my arc and just draw a line right there and I'm going to take my rectangle here select that line Hold the shift key when you're selecting more than one item. And I'm just going to mirror by flipping it about the line. So it puts another one down here. Okay. I'm just flipping it about the line, making a mirrored copy. Make sure you got create a mirrored copy checked. All right. Now I'm just going to take my scissors. We'll trim that line away. I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm going to trim these areas away to create that little step right there. Okay, come over here and trim this line away and that line away to create that little step. So that's going to be my profile. Okay, that'll be my profile. All right, so we're using shapes and lines and arcs and a little bit of note editing to kind of create the profile we want, whether it be a curve or an arc or a line or what have you. Uh, so this is going to be my body shape. So my box is going to have that kind of lip at the top that steps in at the bottom and then it's going to have the arc on it. And I'm going to take that guideline and get rid of it now. So there's my profile. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll use the molding toolpath, right? The molding toolpath in Vetric. So this can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire. Okay. So we're going to open up the molding toolpath and we're going to select the line that we drew on the right side of our part. It's hard to see, but it is selected. And that's going to be the line that we're going to sweep, you know, across and everything. And now here's the kicker. If I use that line, it's only going to stretch this molding profile it's only going to stretch it as far as the line is, the, the shape is big. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. If I hold down my shift key and I select this, I'm going to get these short lines because that's how big the molding profile is. Right. Well, I don't want that. Um, if I was, uh, you know, creating kind of a, uh, you know, a, uh, a singular kind of small profile or something that would be great but I'm creating a long board with that profile swept all the way across so I need to sweep it so in this case I'm not going to use the right line the right line here I'll go ahead and use the bottom line and then when I hold my shift key down bear with me got to connect my shapes together they're all three separate right now when I did my, let's close this tool, close that tool. When I did my trimming, I didn't have my box check to join those vectors. Uh, my, my scissors didn't, I did have my box check. Why didn't you join? All right, let's go ahead and join those as one vector. We need one joined open vector. Okay. And um, now I need that profile to sweep across that shape. Okay. Now here's the kicker. How my profile is orientated right now, I'm orientated up and down. If I choose that right line, 
and here I'm going to just get a small profile right on the end of that board okay I don't want that all right if I rotate my part I'm gonna use the number 9 key on my uh, keyboard to rotate this part if I rotate my part like this and I use that line and this now I'm getting that wide part it's all how it's orientated well if I use my bottom line and this it's going downward right that's not what we want either so I need my top line and that it's got to stretch all the way across my wood of my material okay so these lines that get created when we select the vector you've got to look at how they're going to orientate and they're either going to go from right to left or top down so if I would have selected that bottom line it's shooting it off my board I need the top line okay I know that's confusing but I'm just kind of showing you different ways uh, so I'm gonna create this and then this and now my profile is starting here and getting us swept across in that orientation across there let's calculate this and see what it looks like what we've just created I'm going to calculate this with a eighth inch ball nose bit um, I probably want my 16th to be able to get into this detail here but I'm going to actually machine the flat regions with an end mill I'm gonna let the ball nose bit kind of focus on the modeling area and I'm going to calculate that toolpath and if we look in kind of a side view let me turn this on its X here okay so that profile is getting swept across that board and that's hard to see you know but it's getting swept across that board in that fashion right so I'm gonna be able to create the whole molding let's go ahead and preview the cut and a mat and can and also uh, know that I'm using an eighth inch ball nose bit right so when we come and look at the end of this let me get to the end right here I have that rounded eighth inch ball shape here okay so if it was a 16th it'd be a little bit narrower but it's not going to be that sharp point that I've got there right so you just have to you're, you're kind of you're stuck with what the bit gives you right okay so I've got my piece of molding here that let's kind of come out here what's a good orientation so y'all can see the profile so I've got my piece of molding here that then once that gets carved I can take it over and cut it up you know uh, cut all the miters and stuff in it and create my four boxes very simple simplistic and things like that that we do we can create whatever our profile is we can create that shape and stuff now here's some of the drawbacks and let me answer a couple of questions you can right click on the horizontal open vector and change where the profile is placed either on the top side of the vector or the bottom side of the open vector exactly so what Michael is talking about is when we have our molding toolpath open you have this green node here that you can reverse the direction of it here and here okay and I want this to be uh, the um, top and this to be I'm sorry I want this to be the top here this to be the bottom whatever it matters and that's what it's going to when it sweeps down it'll go from top to bottom it'll start from here and you see the direction that it's spanning it if I wanted to go the other way I would reverse that direction okay now I think if I had this selected and I selected this in that molding tool path I'm still shooting downward so you still have to have your top vector selected no matter what direction you're in here now if I come over here on the open vector 
I can reverse that direction as well and it shoots it up. So it's one or the other. What direction do we want the profile to sweep? And depending on the vector we select, what direction is it going to go? And that's what Michael is alluding to, okay? But in this case, I'm just gonna select the top line, right? So either or, but Michael has a very valid point. So thank you, Michael, for that. Now let's go back and change this, reverse that direction back that way. And we've got our very simple molding profile. Now let's look at it a little bit different, but this time we're gonna create some feet and we're gonna have a molding profile, but we're also gonna have a profile cut to cut out some shapes, right? So let's say that on here, um, depending on how you know uh, tall I want my feet and stuff, this is three inches, I probably wouldn't have three inch legs on there. But let's just pretend for a moment. I'm gonna import some vectors that I have. And let's close this tool here. And we're going to look at two styles of feet, two profiles of feet. One that looks like this and one that looks like this. They're basically pedestal feet, okay? Now the one thing I'd like to do on this when I was drawing, I was in a little bit of a hurry. I need to go into node editing mode and I need to delete this point right here, and I need to select this node first, this node second, hit the letter Y on my keyboard to straighten that out and clean that up, okay? I need that nice straight piece. So we're gonna make these kind of bun type feet, and for those of you that need some visual, visual aids, uh, let me show you what one of those feet look like. I'll show you both styles. Uh, let's open up this one <clears throat> Depending on the profile and, and things that we carve. All right, so let's zoom in on this Okay, so when that part gets cut out We're gonna get mitered and then they'll get glued together into that V shape to create that corner foot Let's look at a different one here. The one that we're going to um, Let's come here and let's zoom in on this one. So we're gonna be profile cutting this shape out and then those two shapes will cut out uh, two, four, six, eight of those and they'll get mitered and glued together to create that corner foot, okay? So the shape that we're uh, basically working with, let me go the other direction. Is this shape here so this is what one half of that foot looks like right and so that's this shape here now this shape up here again I need to clean it up a minute we'll clean it up in just a minute uh, this we will use when we create the, the molding toolpath when we can do a little bit more decorative type foot add some swirls and things like that into it but right now we're just going to work with this profile now, first thing I need to do on my profile is set my size. You know, how tall do I want the feet of my box uh, and, and things, you know, uh, that I'm going to attach to the bottom of this box? How tall do I want them? How big do I want that corner piece to be, you know, uh, on, the, on the two parts? So my width and my height. Currently, right now, I'm at a height of about 1.39 inches, you know, uh, something about like that and I I want to kind of bring that down some so I'm going to uh, bring that down to a three-quarter inch tall foot okay and now I've only got one inch wide so that means it's gonna go one inch this way one inch this way and I might want to extend that out a little bit one of the things I have to be mindful of is I don't want to stretch it, right? I don't want to stretch it. You might, it might look good to you or what have you. So what I need to do is I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm going to cut the vector right here in the middle here. 
and I'm going to cut the vector here and I'm gonna back this up a little bit now I don't want that you know I don't want too big of a bunt foot the actual foot and bunt is not the right word but I don't want too big of a foot so I need to kind of bring my curve in a little bit I need to bring my curve in and stuff but I would like you know um, on my overall uh, width and everything I'm about 1.17 inches 1756 uh, I'd like to bring this over a little bit more something about like that let's see where I'm at here uh, 1.3 Okay. All right. So I need to join these two with a straight line. Now, when I do join with a straight line, it's going to be, you know, um, kind of a crapshoot of which one joins first. I'm hoping the top one joins because here on this one, I'm actually going to go into node editing and I need to adjust my curve a little bit. So I'm actually going to select all of these vectors here and I'm going to bring them out some just bring them in a little bit closer and this here I'm going to delete this point and I could have that to be a natural curve or something I could turn it into kind of an arc or a busy curve whatever you know I may want it to be uh, whatever shape I want over there and then now I'm going to take this and join it with a straight line to close that off Okay, so that's going to be my profile piece here. All right, let's go ahead and create the actual foot, uh, though. And if we look at the uh, photo, let's go back to here oops, and zoom into it. This has, it, it's kind of a bulge at the top and it comes in. And then there's a little step down pad at the bottom right so we can create that profile uh, and uh, and then we can cut out the shape so let's do that and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this profile here I want to use it in a moment when we do some modeling so I'm just going to come in and create another rectangle and again uh, the height is gonna be a uh, half an inch and the width here um, is going to be three inches. I'm going the span of my whole board, okay? And uh, because, I, or I could make my board smaller and narrower and all that stuff if I'm doing the feet, but I'm kind of just working with this one board, right? So I'm gonna go three inches. Uh, and once again, doo -doo 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 -doo. click apply, okay? Uh, once again, what I was trying to say is we, we wanna get rid of that lower span. So we're gonna go into node editing and right click and delete that span. Now, imagine if this is the top of my foot here. Um, I want it to have, it's gonna have a flat top, but I want it to have a nice curve in, down, and then a little, little foot. Now, my, I'm kind of guided, governed by my profile here, my shape. So if I bring this in on that three inch board, you know, and if I was going to do it on a three inch board, I'd be cutting a whole ton of feet for the future and all that stuff. Um, and I'd create the profile appropriately, but I'm kind of governed by the height of this. If I'm going to have that curve, you know, have a high curve here and then kind of curve in down here and then that little bunt foot down here, I need to kind of, my profile needs to kind of work with this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's look at our size here and my height of this is going to be three quarters so if I measure vertically if I measure from here let's say I want that bulge to come right about here and then start to come in then you know I've got to be around three eighths right I got to, I got you know I have that curve at three eighths and then I got to start kind of coming in okay and I want to go kind of half and half so 
on this profile here, I'm going to use guidelines to help me lay it out. I'm gonna create a relative guide, negative 0.375. Uh, and I just said negative and I didn't do a negative. Negative 0.375. And um, then I'm going to uh, go relative another 375. That'll give me my three quarter inch overall. But I wanna come back on this one, it'll be a positive number. I want about, I don't know, a 16th of an inch little pad. So 0 0.0625, it'll be a positive number this time. So that'll be that. So once I have it, hopefully this isn't boring to you guys. Um, no, Jeffrey, this is not. Uh, it's done. Uh, we're using the molding tool pass so it can be done in Vetric, VCarve, Desktop Pro, and Aspire. When we get into the molding tools in Aspire, those will be Aspire features. But right now we're just using the molding tool path, the molding tool path, okay? Um, so in node editing mode, uh, I'm going to insert a point at this midpoint here. And I'm also gonna insert a point here and here, okay? Now, <clears throat> On this line going at from the top down, I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve, or I could turn it in just to an arc, right? I could turn it into an arc and pull that arc up so it kind of comes out, okay? Uh, depending on how much I want it to come out and stuff. And in this span here, I could come in and make this also an arc. Ooh, and we can go this way to create that shape and I'll go ahead and just you know um, I'll leave that point there but you know I could create that shape there okay for that depending on how dramatic you want it or or what have you you know now height's gonna be a thing we're gonna have to we got to stay within our half inch we'll talk about that in just a moment um, but now right here when it comes down to here there's going to be a slight recess coming in for that pad you know for that padded foot and stuff so what i'm going to do is we're going to come in here and i'm going to insert another point and when it comes down i don't need it to come down too much so i'm actually going to drag that point back here a little bit and i'm going to insert another point and pull this one kind of behind it. Again, I need to align those two. I need to align those two. And the uh, select this node, that's what I want to align to. Shift, select that, and it's the X axis, so I'll hit the X. I'll pull that in there, okay? And then this node here, I need to bring down and align with this one. So I'm gonna select this one first, this one second, hit the letter Y to bring that down into alignment, okay? And now my pad coming from here, that little 16th of an inch pad, that is a 16th of an inch. Um, it looks bigger when you're zoomed in, but I may want a little arc to it. I may want it to be flat, you know, what have you. In this case, I'm going to create an arc, and we don't want a big arc like that, but I'm just going to have a very subtle curvature to it, okay? Now, knowing that I'm not gonna get that sharp point, it's all gonna be based on my bit, so I will have a radius here if I'm gonna use a 16th inch tapered ball nose or an eighth inch tapered ball nose, but I just want a little bit of a curvature there. So, if I were to, for the moment, uh, cut this vector right here, and if I were to take this shape and rotate it 90 degrees, you can see kind of the profile that was created, right? So we have kind of that shape there. 
All right, now I don't want to cut it, so I'm going to turn that back and undo that cut there. But here, the rest of this material here, I'm just, all I'm going to do is, number one, I need to make sure that I, no matter what, my overall height is a half inch. That's all I've got to work with, a half inch material. Uh, and then I'm just going to leave this flat because I could use that if I'm only cutting this foot out of this top part here. Uh, I could use this bottom part for something else. So I'm just going to leave it kind of a flat board and, and all. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to align to this node. I'm going to select this one last and hit the letter Y just to align that. But now I need to look at my overall height and I'm at 0.56 because of that arch. So I'm going to keep my three inches. I'm going to unlink X, Y, and I'm going to make this 0 0.5 and just bring it down in height. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of the guidelines so they're not, you know, um, confusing us at all. And let's take this profile, which we're going to be using in a moment. Delete that. Come here. And we're going to take this profile. We're going to take our top line again, or our top line first, then our profile. Let's open up the molding tool path to sweep that across. Um, I'm going to use my quarter inch end mill to machine the flat regions, and that's going to be what's left at the bottom. Okay, so I'll use that for that because I'm going to mill all that down. Uh, and um, we could limit this I could cut this off here and put a leg straight down there uh, or leave that without the leg and just mill the only the, the top part I'm gonna use and not mill the rest of my bottom part of my board down however you want to do it you can do it uh, I'll show you both ways just so you know um, so we know that if we take this line and we select our entire three inch piece it's going to mill that whole three inch board with this flat region, right? Okay, well, let's zoom in, close this tool. That tool was very picky about how it's, get, how it's used. Uh, and let's cut the vector here. Okay. And I could very well take this part and just select this upper piece and it'll just do that upper three quarters that I'm gonna be using, right? Either way, your choice. Uh, let's calculate this so we can see what it looks like. Reset the preview. Preview that visible tool path. Trying to make this uh, somewhat make sense to you. We're working on feet right at the moment. We're going to get back to sides in a moment. Um, so let's tilt this on its X. There we go. And so we have that shape here. Okay, of that foot. Now let's cut it out. So we're going to take our profile. I'm going to snap it there. Now, I need a left and a right, right? A left and right, left and right, left and right, because when they get cut and all, they're going to get glued together to create that, that foot. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go into the mirror tool, uh, create a mirror copy, and I'm going to flip it to the left to create that left and right profile. Okay? And I'm just going to, I need eight of these. Uh, so I'm just going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag out two more sets or three more sets. Snap you son of a gun. Snap. All right, let's move these over. I don't need to waste that much wood. good 
All right, now I'm going to create a profile cut. Cutting my half inch deep. I'll use a cold. I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill on this. Cutting on the outside of the line. I'm not going to add tabs for visual purposes, uh, but you would add some tabs most likely. Let's get in here and let's cut out those feet. Kind of rotate these a little bit. Get on your sides, boys. Okay. Now, these feet get mitered right on this inside edge. So we get a miter cut here and a miter cut here, and they get glued together to create that 90 degree bunt foot. Okay. Uh, pedestal foot, whatever you want to call it. All right. So that's all just with the molding tool path and a profile cut to create the feet or create some decorative sides. So we've got the sides and the feet. The only thing we're missing is a lid and some decorative stuff in that, right? So we got the, we got the, the body part done. Um, but on our sides, it'd be nice to, maybe we could flip the board over and create the groove where the bottom's gonna go. You know, our little quarter inch panel or eighth inch panel or whatever you're gonna use for your box bottom. We could cut that groove in there as well. So it's already in there. So we don't have to run it through a table saw if we don't have a table saw uh, and, and things like that. Um, but uh, you know, we can create that, those feet. Now, Let's say for an example that we wanted, uh, you know, a different type of foot, uh, you know, shape. And let me clean this up here. We're going to clean up uh, these lines and stuff. Let me go to node editing. First of all, all of these nodes right here can get deleted. I'm going to hit the letter. I selected them all and hit the letter D on the keyboard to delete them. And I want to align this to this node here. I want to take this, hold down the shift key and hit the letter Y on the keyboard to bring that into alignment. And then I'm going to delete that point. Okay. And I would, uh, I'd like that to have a little bit more of a curve to it. So let's go in and uh, bring just a subtle curve not that much there we go so I could use this as a profile to cut those feet out with that same profile so it would have that bulge coming out at the top and then recess on the inside um, let's see if we can go down the x-axis again and zoom in zoom in zoom in come on part Not buffering, am I? Okay. Stand by. <clears throat> Trying to, these little old feet. All right, let's move this over. Let it regenerate. Okay. So these feet have this kind of little curve and then they have that recessed little bunt there, um, little pad, whatever you want to call it. But you know, that will be my foot shape. Uh, we could change that profile up and do something a little different. We could, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. That's the general style for those type of feet. Like we, you know, uh, showed you in here. Um, you know, generally it has just that, that kind of curve, right? So, um, it's, you know, not near real decorative, but when we get into other foot styles, which you're going to see in a moment, which are like this, they have, it's just a flat profile. Now this one has decorative swirls right here. That's when we get into the molding, molding, modeling, 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 
uh, we'll we'll put those swirls and stuff in there, but uh, we can't really create that sweat profile of those swirls in the molding tool. So there are some limitations, right, uh, to that molding tool. But I can create my little lip that comes in and then straight flat and then my little lip that comes out. I can create that, that foot just by creating that profile uh, in things, you know, depending on what you want your decorative feet to look like. But if you want something with these little swirl bulges and stuff on it, that's modeling. That's going to be a spire, right? So we're kind of... Uh, you know, we do with the molding tool path. There's, there, we can do a lot, but we're limited for the most part. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see here. With the, uh, let's answer a question here. Uh, Fozzie Bear, for the feet, do you need an offset for the miter? No. No. Um, I wish I could. Uh, find a top view like this of the other foot but um this is kind of more rounded they sanded the edge off it's not really a tight miter on this uh, i'd like to find the one of the other ones but th imagine this is going to be your straight part and straight part and then we just put a miter cut on the ends and then they get glued together right so you're you don't need an offset for the miter uh, you're just miter cutting those those two parts. Now, if you're thinking that you need an offset so you have some waste material that you can cut off, right? Uh, you know, and all, you can do that. But when it comes to the rounded feet here, you're literally, it's almost like, you know, not like a coping saw. But uh, when you, let me see if I can zoom in, zoom in. When this gets mitered here, uh, when that miter cuts right straight down there, um, it's cutting that back waist area away. And when it comes together, we create that nice curved profile. So no, an offset is not needed. Um, let's see here. Uh, we, uh, Charles, would it be better to have a straight side for the feet to cut the miter. It is going to be a, a, you know, okay. So would it be better to have a straight side to cut the feet is what they're asking, you know, to cut the miter instead of have this, uh, this shape here. Um, I've never done it with the straight side, but what they're referring to, what Charles is referring to is on this edge here. If I try to do a straight side, right? If I draw the profile to cut out a straight side, I lose you know, kind of this profile cut. Uh, and when it gets mitered, you know, when I take this over to my saw, I have a stop that on my stop, let's say that this is my stop here. Um, my stop goes up against my foot here and tilt it a little bit, but uh, it comes and runs, you know, it gets clamped down. I got a I got a sled that clamps everything in place and it cuts it right off. Now, if we did a straight side, what they're referring to, um, I don't think it would look the same. But bear with me a second here. That's going to change this outer profile. I lose that curve there. I'm going to lose that curve right on the miter if I do it as a straight uh, side there, uh, Charles. But let's, that's for shits and giggles. Bring this up. Okay, and make sure that's a closed vector. Let's come in here and reset that preview. Preview the visible tool pass. Oops, stop. 
I need to recalculate because I changed one of the parts. So bear with me a second. Uh, let me close off this open vector. All right, it's open. Bear with me a minute. Got a little bit of an overlap right here. <clears throat> All right, let me put that back up where it belongs. And once again, let's select we'll just do these preview the visible toolpath okay let that uh, preview out and then we'll take a look at it um, I never use a straight side on that but Let's come in and look at it. So, yeah, if we miter cut that, we're still going to get the same shape. I don't lose anything. I don't think I lose anything. Yeah, we could. Uh, let me think here for a minute. Bear with me a second. If I miter cut that back. Hmm. I don't think I would lose anything as far as the detail. My miter cut has to come right straight across here. I don't know, Charles, that might work. Um, I've never done it that way, but hell, it may just work. Um, I'm there's, I'm losing something by going with a straight edge. I know it. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to check that one out. Well, Charles, you got me stumped on that one, man. Um, that's a good question. I I think I'm... I kind of think I'm losing something here. But I don't know. Am I? Maybe not. Maybe not. Now I'm going to have to go out and test that. <laughs> um, well, hell. So that's a good point. I'll have to get an answer back to you on that one. If it, uh, you stumped me on that one. I kind of feel like I'm losing something by it uh, being straight like that. But maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. I don't know. Hell, and I teach woodworking. Forget CNC machining. I do this for a living. Hold on a second. Let me think here. No? No? I'm 
I'm still gonna hell it it looks like it'll still come out the same but I've never done it that way so now I got to think about that one buddy um I got to think about that uh right Barry so Barry uh you know you're losing length Okay, so Fonzie Bear says you're losing length. Uh, Charles says you might have to make it a little longer. And then Barry says, uh, as I see it, you're not losing because you're cutting away the molding anyway. Yeah. I think you guys are right. See there? I'll have to try that and get a different approach and see if I, when it's all together at that 90 degree, if I still have that, that shape. I should still have that shape. I should still have that shape. Yeah. We'll have to look at it. We'll have to give it a try. So yeah. All right. It appears to me the only thing you lose is the curve at the end. Um yeah, well, I don't, that's one thing I don't want to lose. That's what I'm worried about is this curve right here. But it should, I think that curve is kind of a reflection of this curve when it's in a 90 degree. That's the only thing that's my only concern. I'll have to do one of each and see uh, if there's a difference. If not, I'll, I'll report back to you guys and girls because... What I want is when this piece turns 45 degrees, I want that inner curve here. I think I lose that a little bit. I don't know. We'll look at it. I'll have to, I don't have an answer for you. We got to move on. Uh, so good questions, but I don't have the answer. Um, uh, but... I've never done that, so I will have to give it a try to see if it changes the result, the end result any. If not, then, hey Archie, right? All right, let's move on. Let's move on because I have things to do. All right, so now the same would apply, you know, with this as well, okay? And, um, you know, uh, cutting out these feet and all. But also consider on your boxes. Let me go back to this camera here. Also consider on your boxes and everything. Uh, if you have, a, you know, a taller foot, having some, instead of a straight bottom here, have a little bit of a decorative profile design you know, on the bottoms, maybe on the front and the back or all the way around. That's where, you know, uh, you know, something like this would come into play. You know, when you create your profile, but has, it has some natural, nice curvature or design to it, but it has, um, you know, a little bit of a decorative bottom shape instead of just a flat bottom. So, uh, things, like that and I got my green screen on get back here all right but uh, so decorative moldings to go between the legs you know uh, whether they attach or they're actually cut into the actual part right uh, give that a consideration now we're going to uh, work with these uh, this shape and this shape here in a moment when we do some modeling modeling and stuff so but i want you to think about your aprons right the bottom of your boards and stuff but the first thing first and foremost is create whatever profile shape that you want and you can you know stretch across now one of the downsides of the um modeling tool path and i haven't explored it very much but it creates a tool path right there's not a physical model and if I wanted something, 
you know, if I wanted to add grapevines to the top of this, or if I wanted to add some swirl models or something to the top of this, I really can't with the molding toolpath. I'm just creating a molding shape, right? Uh, there, it doesn't create a physical model. It creates a toolpath for the cut. This is where modeling, having the Aspire software and being able to model kind of gives us that little bit of an advantage. That's why it is an advantage to have Aspire, you know, and that's why, you know, you have that price difference, you know, what's the difference between Vacar Pro and Aspire, those modeling tools and things. That's why it's so much higher and all that stuff. So we can do a lot with this and the molding toolpath. We can create all kinds of unique profiles. We can cut those profiles out to create all kinds of shape and feet and aprons and what have you uh, uh, in things because I might want that little apron bottom part. I might want it to have a little curve to it instead of being just flat, you know. I might want it to have a little bit of curve to it so it flows with the bottom of the box. I can still cut out that. I can create that molding piece and then cut out that profile cut to create that shape and it still has that body to it uh, and things right so um yeah stan everybody's still kind of stuck on that miter right um it would work uh it would be like uh miter and crown molding uh the uh tad more length yeah, so Rob, you're ex exactly right. It's just like uh, mitering, uh, molding, or crown, uh, and things. Um, you're st you're not going to lose anything. You're right when you think of it about that, like that. I just, I'm kind of stumped as to why I never approached it that way. I've always cut out the design of the foot and cut it, because with that cut already, that curvature in there. It's kind of like when I cut that miter, it's, it's kind of like almost using a coping saw, you know, to uh, kind of, but I'm not coping. I'm not fitting one over another. I'm creating a miter. So yeah, you're not losing anything. It's just like mitering crown molding and stuff. So I agree. I agree with all of you on that one. Uh, we would probably need to add a little bit of extra length for that waist cutoff or something. So we get our whatever size feet that we want, you know, uh, and everything. But you're right. I don't think we would lose anything. I agree with you. I agree with you all. I agree. See there? You guys are slick. Y'all know what's happening. You got it. You got it. You got it. Um, all right. Now let's look at this in a little bit of a different light. So um, first off, the let's move these out of the way for a moment. Um, that takes care of the sides and the feet. And you can think about how you want your feet. There are so many different uh, shapes that we can cut out for feet and things, uh, you know, uh, and all that we can uh, play around with. How we could do this as a, we could create our molding profile and do this as a two-sided job to create an actual round foot. If we were, you know, on a, like even on the larger scale, maybe this is instead of a small box, it's like a chest or something, or it could be a, tall standing jewelry box or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, uh, this could be dresser feet or what have you, right? On a little bit larger scale, a little bit thicker material, this could be the bottom feet of our dresser drawer, uh, the, our dresser, you know, chest of drawers that we're making or, uh, uh, you know, uh, things like that, end tables and all that good stuff. Um, bedroom side cabinet table type things, you know, that we could have those decorative feet. They would be a little bit taller probably in the in that shape and everything, but we could create those natural curves. So I'm working right now on the scale of small boxes, but think bigger, you know, uh, as far as feet for actual furniture parts, right? Um, let's see here. Bear with me a moment. Give me a good example, guys. Well, I don't have really a good example to show. Here's a good example. Uh, let me save that image as 
save that. All right, let me show you one more example. Um, let's go. That's the digital woodcarver 5100. Let me find where that part is. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Then we got to move on. Uh, let's see here. Downloads. Okay. So similar to the feet of, you know, this uh, chest of drawers here. You know, we, it's basically that miter, you know, that shape, that molding shape. And then you've got the profile cut that's cutting out that molding shape to the shape of the foot. Now, in this case, it's got the front is decorative. And then on the back side, it is um, uh, just kind of a straight piece. There's nothing real. It's not that corner piece and all, but you get the idea. So it doesn't have to be, this can be scaled up is what I'm saying. Long story short, it can be scaled up. Uh, for bigger, you know, parts and things like that, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, Barry Scrib. I'm gonna do this and see what this. What, what I'm gonna have to do it too. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be playing with this weekend, and I'll report back what my results were. All right. Let's uh, now let's kind of transition. Now everything that I'm gonna be talking about this point is we're gonna do a little bit of molding, modeling. Get those two words mixed up. Uh, to uh, create the similar sides and things, but with a couple of extra little decorative elements that we just can't apply with the uh, molding tool path. So I just want to show you both, and then that's going to kind of you know wrap up. And then what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and uh, turn it in. We'll get a lid too, right? We need a lid, but we'll we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up in one nice little bundle here in a minute, but let's talk about the other side of the spectrum just for a minute. So what I'm going to be doing now is going to, from this point forward right now, um, is going to be Aspire features, and then we'll come back again uh, and kind of conclude this into usable things. But I just want to talk to you about sides and feet and all that stuff. Now I'm going to use the same shapes here that I have, and I'm also going to use this same part here, the same profile that I created earlier, okay? I'm also gonna import an image, two of them as a matter of fact, so I'll import this one first, and then I'll import this one second, okay? And I'm going to trace these to create some vectors. So I'm going to go into the trace bitmap tool. Make sure y'all can see me. Uh, turn that bitmap fading off. Let's slide this forward. Oop, not that far. I'm going to turn my default corner fit, turn my noise filter up to five, preview, apply, close. I'm going to go ahead and delete that image. Uh, and instead of remove it, I'm going to just delete that image so that I can take this vector here and let's move it up there. And then I'm also gonna take this shape here and I'm gonna trace it as well, this image. So turn that fading off. I'm going to slide this, I'm doing a black and white trace. And preview, apply, close. I am, again, this time I'm going to delete that image just so I have that shape. And we're going to use those in just a moment. Okay. Uh, and, and things, right? Work with me and we'll, we'll get her, we'll get her tight and right. All right. So now I'm in, I'm going to use the Aspire features of the modeling tools. So I will be using this top line and this bottom line to do a two rail sweep. And I'm going to be sweeping this profile. So I need to go ahead and turn this profile 90 degrees, okay? Because I'm gonna sweep it along these two rails. So we're gonna select this rail and this rail, and we're gonna go into the two rail sweep tool and use those as our drive rails. And then I'm going to select this profile. I'm gonna sweep it between the two spans, those two rails, and uh, scale it uh, accordingly, and I'm gonna click apply. Okay. Okay. 
let's go into our 3D view and um, let's close this. Okay, so we have this model here that we've just created. Okay, which is that basic profile that we have, right? Okay, now what I want is I know that my box sides uh, and everything, uh, I'm gonna close this and on my model, I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the rectangles, kind of the boundaries of my box sides. So I'm gonna come into my drawing tools I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna have one box side that is uh, nine inches by three. And then I'm gonna have another box side that is gonna be six inches by three. Okay. And I need two of each of these. And I'll just do, the, I'll use the mirror tool. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this one first into place. And let's get this one into place. And then let's take, and I'm gonna use the mirror tool. Create a mirror copy, flip about job center, flip horizontally, uh, control Z, flip about job center, make sure that's checked. All right. Now, my box is, let's get these lined up here. Now I made my board 30 inches. That's my nine by six. So if my box was gonna be nine by six, you need to account for your saw cuts, right? And waste. If you're gonna take this one panel board and you're gonna cut a miter and then flip that board and cut the other miter and flip that board and cut the other miter and all that, you gotta account for that waste. Right now, if I'm using, if I wanna end up with a nine by six box, I have not accounted for my waste, right? I have not given myself any room for waste. So, I need to go ahead and size this up a little bit. Let's go into my job size here and let's give myself a little bit of waste. Um, thinking here. I'll give myself a quarter of an inch between each part. So quarter, uh, uh. all right, let's add another inch to that part. <laughs> Laney, get with your program, brother. Uh, our, uh, Jeez Louise, uh, 31, not one. <laughs> All right, so now I need to, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's click okay on that. Always gotta think about that waste. Now, of course you can cut this out of smaller boards, like if you don't have 31 inches on your CNC and you don't wanna do tiling, you can just cut it out of smaller boards, right? And uh, you know, it could this could be a, a 10 inch board, a seven inch board, 10 inch board, seven inch board, you know, kind of thing. And you could cut this, you know, four different times. Uh, I'm just doing that out of one long board. I do have a 40 inch cutting area, so I'm with 31, I'm okay. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's clean some things up. So, This line needs to be 31. And I want it to stretch from the bottom left corner there. There we go. This one here, 31. I'm using this because I want it to stay on this corner, just stretch 
that way, right? So uh, when I do that, it'll just extend that way to the end of my box there. Okay, let's go ahead and get this into position. And let's move these over. So I'm gonna go ahead and relatively move. Relative. To the right, x-axis, positive number. Uh, I'm just going to go uh, 0.1875. Okay. This one I'm going to move 0.1875. Snap this one to the end here. Move that over now. 0.1875. Working my way back to you, baby. Okay, that line can get deleted for the moment. Now, still got plenty of room over here. What I want to do now is I'm going to take these parts and center them on my material, right? So I have a little bit of waste between each of these parts for the perspective miter cuts. All right, one more time. Let's go ahead and select our top rail and our bottom rail in our two rail sweep tool. That's going to be our drive rails. Let's select our profile and apply that. Hopefully y'all are getting something out of this. <laughs> All right, so we got our molding here. Now what I wanna do is um, I would like to add some decorative elements to this. Now uh, let's close this tool. Now these decorative elements, I could use existing clip art uh, that comes with the software, the Vetric uh, you know, software. And um, in my clip art, my decorative uh, models, I, I have I have the hiccups. I have all kinds of decorative models and stuff that I can use, uh, but I can also use and create shapes with the Aspire software. I have the ability to create shapes uh, with vectors, and so in this case, I'm going to size this down, and I want this to be sized in a way that it falls inside of my curve. Okay, I want it to kind of wrap along my curve, and um, I'm going to go ahead and align that up and down on my material make sure it's centered and now i could create uh just kind of a center piece on each part so it's on each one or i could create to where this is kind of a pattern that goes all the way around kind of things however you want to do it uh we can create some other decorative elements uh along with this you know we could kind of create some other decorative elements to go along with it whatever fancies your tickle, right? Whatever tickles your fancy. Now, what I do want to do is I want to take this and select that and then select this first rectangle and I want to align it to the center of that, okay? I'm just gonna, this is gonna be an accent on the front of my box. So I don't necessarily need this on any of the other parts because it's gonna be the accent on the front of my box and I'm dedicating this part right here as the front of my box, right? Um, but I could, you know, do it on all four pieces, right? So this little element is all the way around, whatever, whatever fancies you, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to hold down the control key and we'll throw it on each part, snap it to the center of there. That's not the center. We'll fix that. Snap it there. That's not the center. My snapping tool is just doing wonderful things today. All right, let's kind of start here. Select this and then this rectangle last align to center. That one's good. Select this and this rectangle last align to center. That's more like it. Select this one and this part align to center of the last selected object, which is my rectangle. Now, of course, I said last selected object. So select that rectangle last and align to center. Perfect. So I could have this where it's a decorative element all the way around, or I could just have it on the front of the box. You could put text, you could put whatever you want, right? We could add some more stuff. I could go into my clip art and see if I have any cool like little uh, uh, grapes or vines or whatever, 
right? Just use your imagination. But in this case, I want to build these shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and select these elements. And let's go into the 3D view here and zoom in. And I'm going to go in and let's do a split view, top and bottom. Maybe you guys can see that. You should be able, my head should be out of the way if I move. Um, and I'm going to go into the modeling tool, create shape from vector outline. So let's zoom into these parts here. And I'd like them to have a bit of a curvature to them, a nice curvature to them. Now, how subtle is that curve is going to be? Depends on, you know, what it looks like. Uh, so I don't want a base height on these. And I want to add them to the existing model. That way they follow the contour of that arc. Okay. So they follow the contour of that arc and everything to create that negative shape. Now, if I added, you know, if I went, let's say 90 degrees, okay, and click apply, you know, that's going to make that much more bulgy and, 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 and fat looking and stuff, you know, and all. Now I do have a flat depth on there. Let me turn the no limit off. Uh, and let's click apply on that. I had it limited to where it was flattened out. Okay. And we might not want it that bulgy. I'm a big fan of a 60, 30, 60, you know, something, sometimes even 45. So I'm actually going to stick with a 60 degree curve on this. And it's going to be less bulgy in the joints and things like that where these come together. Now, I could decide if I want a bit of a base height, a little bit of a base height, a little bit of meat underneath. So this is shape height right now. I just created the shape height. There's no base height to that model. If I give it a little base height, let's say uh, a 30 second, 0.03125, and click apply it, that's going to raise that part off. Okay. It's just going to kind of give it a little bit of lift. So if we tilted this to the side here, that straight meat, right? Just giving it a little bit of a lift. Okay. And on that, if I ever do a base height, let me try to zoom in to uh, where we can see a little bit of that angle. Tilt that a little bit more. If I ever do a little bit of base height, I also add a bit of a draft. Okay. Um, this creates on that base height, that straight meat, it kind of creates a little bit of an angular to it. So my ball nose bit, because it's tapered and all, instead of having to come down, it can kind of ramp up to that model cut, you know, when it's cutting. Helps kind of reduce the runtime a little bit. But draft is typically used when you're creating moldings, like injection moldings. It's so the part releases uh, and stuff. But I use draft to give a little bit of an angular... Uh, uh, sweep to these straight pieces so it puts a little meat on there so they're not so fragile if I give it a little base height. So um, let's go ahead and uh, close that. I'll leave that 30 second in there. And I'm going to turn off the base model for a moment. I don't want to create any draft on the base model so I'm turning it off. And let's zoom out so it's gone. And I'm going to create a draft and I'm going to go with a 21 degree draft. And let's zoom into one of these so we can see what happens with that draft. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And this straight meat here is just going to get a 21 degree kind of like outward bulge. So all it does is just give it that little bit of an angle. Okay. Now, once that's done, and I have that little bit of extra kind of meat down there. I don't go too crazy with the draft. I don't go like 45 or anything like that. Let me show you what a 45 degree draft would look like. Thirty degrees good. I like 15, 21. You know, I kind of work within the 21 range. Oh, 
almost there. So if we zoom in, you know, that's more of a 45 degree uh, draft to it and all. So you might like the way that looks and stuff. Now, once that's done, we have now created a model with draft. So the original component doesn't need to be selected anymore. We have the model with draft. It's now one item. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of smoothing just to this part. Again, I'm not working with that base. It's turned off right now. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of smoothing to this. Okay, and I'm going to back it off. I'm going to go about a third of the way. You know, so I still have some shape and everything, but it's a little smooth. Let me see. I'm going to, let me zoom in with it, looking at it like this. I want to back it off a little bit. I do want still to have some detail in there. Okay. All right, let's close that. Ah. Always click apply before you close. Uh, so let me do that again. Smoothing. Always click apply before you close. I'm gonna back that off to right about there. Let that build that shape and then click okay. All right. Now that that's in, uh, I can turn off the um, modeling with the draft because I now have the smooth model, right? So I can turn that off and I have the smooth model already created. So again, I kind of progressed my, I got my original, the model with the draft, and now the smooth model, right? So I don't need those open, but I can turn on my other model now to get that to contour to the shape. And I need this combine mode for this smooth model to be an add, not a merge. I need it to add to that profile so it wraps along it. Okay. And so we have our molding strip here that, you know, when we cut those parts out, we have our sides. Okay. Whatever suits your fancy. There you go. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got that. Now let's change it up a bit. Let's turn this one off. Let's create a new layer, add a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to take uh, this here and I'm going to move it to that new layer. And I'm just, it's layer two. I, I didn't give it a name or anything. Um, my model here. I want to make sure that it's on its own layer so it stays on. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, that's on layer one. So that's fine. We'll leave that on layer one. And these vectors here, this, 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 and this, we'll go ahead and move to a new layer. We'll call that layer three, right? So we have two different designs. I want to turn off layer three to hide them for a minute. Uh, layer two is active and let's bring this in now on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that I'm good enough to cut on my line on my miter saw right and I want not only this shape I want this shape to kind of kind of be continued and all but I do want you know where those two miters together I want it to actually wrap that corner Okay, so uh, that when it comes together, it wraps that corner and all. And so even if I had to draw lines here, like, you know, with a V-bit, you know, or whatever, uh, you know, and have it follow that model on a profile cut, right? Just to cut a 60 so I know where my cut lines are, whatever the case may be. But I want this model, this shape here that I'm about to create, I want it to kind of, I actually want it to wrap on the corners of the box. Um, so we would have this design on the four corners of the box and then maybe something 
different in the middle. Could be, you know, whatever the case may be. But let's go ahead and let's get this shape built. Now, we'll talk about how to do we actual weaves where it looks like a weave up and down with actual vectors. This one's one continuous vector. So when we create this shape um, and everything, let's uh, come in here. And I'll turn that other model off in just a moment. When we, oh, that's going to be confusing to you. Let me go ahead and uh, in my model here, this one, I want to move that. Let's make it visible again. Let me select this model. And I want to move that to layer three with its design and of course like a goober I had my other vector selected let me grab that vector again and move that back to layer two okay all right turn off layer three for a minute okay wonderful hide that perfect all right create shape tool okay on this shape I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create the initial shape so we'll go ahead and apply that to see what we look like here. Okay, so that will be the shape. And I'm going to um, close this. This is the fun part. On this component, again, I'm going to add the draft. So turn off the base, hide that for a moment, because I just want to add draft to this component. Uh, we can do 45, kind of stay consistent with the other one, but I, I think I'm going to probably back it off, but let's look at it and see what it looks like. It might look good. You guys got me second guessing myself today. <laughs> My favorite word is save also. Yes, we got to save. We'll do that after this. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Uh, so I'm going to back this back to my 21 degrees and click apply. I just want a subtle, a subtle angle. Okay, that's it. Just a subtle angle there. And um, let's go ahead and save this while we're at it. That's a good word. Uh, let's see here, uh, box, sides, feet. Okay, so I can now uh, let that save real quick. All right, sorry, I was reading something. Okay. We're going to turn off uh, Model 3 because we have the model with the new draft. Okay. And I'm going to add some smoothing to it. Preserve that transparency. And then let that do its thing. And then I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Right about there. Click OK. All right. So now that I have this component and everything, here's the fun part. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's turn off the original because we have the smooth model now. I'm going to take a line. I'm going to take a line and I'm going to find the center of my model. And, you know, if you have a hard time finding center or anything like that, uh, one of the things that you could do is we could take this model and everything and we could grab our rectangle here and align it to the center of that last selected object to make sure that it is centered. 
okay? And with it centered there, then I could use my line tool and find the center of my box and come straight down, right? To find the center of that part. Either way, however you wanna do it, whatever's easiest for you. But I want it in that center. And what I'm gonna do now is one of the cool tools that uh, Vedric has is split. So I'm gonna split the model. And uh, I'm gonna, I gotta select my model here and my line and I'm gonna split that model and it's gonna create part A and part B. Okay. And so this half of the model is here. This half of the model is there, right? So that kind of thing. And I'm going to bring this half over here on that line. Bring this half over here on this line. So that when I do cut my two parts, they will wrap, it'll wrap that corner. Okay. Uh, now these are, these are centered up and down uh, and everything, but if you're not sure, uh, select your model select your box and just go to your alignment tool and align up and down, make sure it's centered. That's centered. I thought they were centered. Let's go ahead and grab this one and do the same thing with this box up and down. There we go. Now it's centered. All right. So I want this to occur on all of the corners. So I'm going to just basically take both of these models here and I'm gonna grab it right in the center. Hold my control key down. Oh, let's do that again. Hold my control key down. Stand by. Come on, snap tool. Bear with me a second, guys. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> snap, you son of a gun. Snap. I don't have anything in here for it to snap to. That's why it's... There we go. All right. Now, once again, I will select that and align up and down. Make sure it's centered. And let's move this again. Let's turn this one off. Control key. Snap, you son of a gun. <laughs> Let me zoom into it and snap it. I should draw a line in there. Make my life easy. Now, on this side, okay, I need this model here. I need it on this line. And did I just move that without hitting Control? Control Z to undo. Hold that Control key down, ladies and gents. Hold that Control key down. Don't move the model. Okay, let's back it up. Oh, you son of a gun. All right, and then this half over here. What is that? What is that? Hold that control key down and drag it over to this side of the box. All right, that's not centered. <laughs> First of all, let me get it over on the edge. I'm just gonna cheat and just bump it over. Okay. 
All right, let's get that aligned up and down. Select that, align up and down, get that centered. Okay, let's go back over here. I think this one is not quite aligned up and down, so let's select that last. There we go. Okay. So now that I have those parts laid out, I can go ahead and turn on my base component again. And all of these components here, from here to here, all of the parts, they need to have a combined mode of add. We're adding to that. Okay? We're adding to that. Now, again, uh, looking at this, my corners, now this vector here, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where we use that just to create the shape, we can get that off our board now. Uh, in this line, we can delete that, we don't need it. So, on my box, bear with me, on the box here, uh, all of my corners are going to have that wrap around decorative shape, you know, on that box. Now, with that, is that, you know, maybe I want to, you know, put some, some kind of decorative element on the front or the front and the back. I don't necessarily need something on the sides to be a little bit too busy. Uh, hell, it could be, you know, it could be someone's name. It could be another, another decorative element, maybe like a floral type uh, leaf. Let's look and see in our clip art, our actual clip art that we have. Let's look and see if there's something that would be appropriate. Um, an appropriate fit. It could be a medallion shape. Actually, I like this shape right here, but I want it to be, it's not the same on the top and the bottom, right? So I'm going to turn this 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to rotate this once, twice. Now you see how this has a point here and this is blunt on the right side. I don't want that. I want it to be the same shape on both sides, right? So what did we just do just a moment ago? We split that mo that one model, right? Well, we're going to split this one again and mirror one side over so it creates a consecutive shape. Um, now, you could do this in any, uh, as far as using your clip art, you could do this in Desktop Pro and Aspire, but it's the clipping, I'm sorry, Desktop Pro or Aspire. You can use the clipping tool and clip away what you don't want. Uh, I'm actually literally just splitting the model using the splitting tool in Aspire. Okay. Um, and so here's what I want to do. First thing I want to do is I'm going to size this down. Okay. I don't want it to be too big or like, you know, uh, you know, crazy and stuff. I want it to be, it's just going to be just a little decorative kind of element. So I'm going to size this down and then I'm going to center it to this piece. This is my front or my back. So I'm going to use my alignment tool and align to the center. Okay. All right. But I want it to be the same looking shape. And I think I want the one with the points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. And Find the center of my box because my part is centered, right? At least we hope our part is centered. It doesn't look centered there, does it? Uh, let me grab this. And it's not centered because this part is longer. Longer. So I'm going to physically move my line over and eyeball the center of that. There we go. <clears throat> I'm happy with that. All right, let's select that model. Let's select that line. And in the modeling tools, let's split that model. Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to delete this one. I don't want side B. Okay. I want side A. And I want to go ahead and mirror side A. 
and I don't want to flip it job center, but I do want to create a mirror copy and I just want to flip it to the right. Okay, dokie. Now, uh, if I got rid of this line here, uh, you can see there's a gap in our model. And if we look at it in the 3D view, let's kind of get up close and personal here. In the 3D view, there's a gap there, right? Got to bring those two things together. And they should merge, right? So I'm going to just bump this one over. And then we'll, once we merge this together, um, we will uh, recenter it on our part. But I'm going to merge these two parts together so they blend as one. Okay. And I'm actually, let's bump it in just a little bit more. All right. And I want to make sure that um, the side has a combined mode of merge. Okay. Now I got to turn off my component for this. This will make sense in a minute. Turn off the, the under component so I can see these two things. I need these to merge. Okay. So I need this to make sure this is merge. I need the two things to merge together. All right, cool. Now I'm going to create a new level, insert a new level, and I'm going to take these two shapes here and I'm going to drag them up and move them up into that new level for the moment. Because what I want to be able to do here is I want to turn off level one and hide everything else. I just want level two on and I want to go ahead and bake the selected components as one and make it one. Okay. I want it to be one. All right, now I can come in and turn in everything else. So I've got one model and I just wanted to, you know, create that, you know, I wanted it to be symmetrical on both sides. All right, let's go ahead and make sure that our model is centered of our part. So align to center. Okay. And I'm just going to have, I don't think that I want, um, I don't think I want it, you know, on the sides. I just want it on the top and, or the front and the back. Okay. Now I'm going to select this one and select this box. It did snap to the center, but I'm going to make sure, see it snapped to something, but it wasn't the center. That's the center. And now I can come back in here and turn my main body back on. Now these models should uh, be added. They should be in, uh, you know, they're a combined mode of merged together there. I don't need, where's my baked? Um, they're both baked. They're merged with each other, but the level is adding to level one. So it's wrapping, it's following that contour, that curve. Okay. So cool. Let's get out of our 2D view and let's look at our part now. All right. And now we have a, you know, a box side uh, that has some decorative elements to it. Uh, and everything, and there's some levels, right? Uh, you know, this is much taller than this uh, in things, and we, you know, we can adjust that. If I need these two parts here, if I come in and select both of them, and I go into the properties, uh, you know, they're only about an eighth of an inch, you know, uh, in height. Uh, I... I might want to reduce them down or, or what, but I want to actually, I'm just going to leave them how they are. I want them kind of standing out a little bit, but the big thing that's going to be the most important thing is my model, the overall, now this overall model, how thick is it? Cause I'm only working with half inch material. 
And right now with these models and everything, it has it has uh, made it 0. 0.6064. There's an error. It's bigger than my material. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size down. And I have a choice. If I set the object size and I set this to 0 0.5 here, um, it's going to, my overall model, it's going to reduce that thickness down. Okay. But if, give it a second. But if I lose any detail, if I sacrifice any of my detail, then what I'm going to do is in Aspire, I have a tool here where I can remove the back side of the model. I can take, I can shave some off the back with replace values with the bottom Z plane. Instead of just squishing that whole model down, I could just remove the material that I need to remove off the back of it. So let's take a close look here at two of these parts right here. And let's look at, let's zoom in and look at this and see if I undo that scale model Z height, let's see what kind of detail I gain or lose uh, in that way. So this is shrink down to a half inch. If I undo that, okay, so I'm not really seeing if I redo that, I'm kind of focusing more on this part here. Yeah, I'm not seeing any reduction in detail and all, so I'm good. Um, all right, from there, it'd be a 3D rough cut and a 3D finish cut when you're using the modeling tool path. So I'm going to use the uh, model or material as the boundary because that is the whole material. Uh, this would probably be two-sided taped or vacuum clamped to the table or two-sided tape down or what have you. So I'm going to use the material as the boundary. And I'm going to use a, uh, for the rough cut, I'm going to use just a quarter inch end mill. And I'm not going to do a 3D raster. I'm going to do a Z level raster. I don't need to waste time doing a 3D raster. I want to just get rid of some of the, hog away some of the waste material. So we're going to calculate that model. Um, and Fozzie Bear has a great um, question. Could you save the new created model in your clip art? With Aspire, yes, sir, you can. Uh, you sure can. Now on here, the uh, quarter inch end mill, uh, the only thing that it's removing on that rough cut is just these areas kind of at that radius. So it's just removing that bit of area there, right? So that's all that rough cut's doing. But what Fozzie Bear was asking, <laughs> I feel like I'm on the, uh, is it the Muppets? Is Fozzie Bear? Um, is on this newly created model that we've created on this trim, could we add it to our clip art library? In Aspire, you can. So you can go to your model and you can export it out as 3D clip art. Okay. Uh, or you could export it out as an STL. Or you could create a component from uh, the you know individual components or all that stuff. In this case, we could export it out as clip art and there we go. And of course, we would save it on the C drive, users, public, public documents. Vetric file, not I saw, I saw, Vetric files, come on mouse, work with me. And then clip art and um, custom models, I got a folder for, and this could be our uh, deco box. molding, whatever you wanted to call it, save that. And when you do that, 
what that does is go into our clip art library and in my custom models uh, it's right here right so now I have it I could use it in future projects or what have you and we can only do that in Aspire um, so but yes you could all right so I've got my model here I got my 3d rough let's go ahead and create the 3d finish And then I really want to quickly create using the molding tool path back to Vetric VCarve Desktop Pro. I want to create a box lid. Okay. And then uh, modeling would be kind of similar, but I want to go back to kind of, I want to revisit the molding tool path on a box lid uh, for the moment. Um, again, this is going to be a raster cut. I always cut with the grain. Uh, I'm going to, I want to make sure I get my details. So I'm using a 16th inch tapered ball nose. Um, I'm using the material as the boundary. That's going to be a raster cut, and I'll go ahead and calculate that toolpath. And then we'll calculate that. Now, while that's going on, uh, Big Daddy says, uh, can that be made into two uh, into a two-sided carving and use a 45-degree bit on the back side to separate the panels? Yes. Yes, it can. It sure can. Uh, and you would use, if you have the Vetric uh, 10.5, you would use the chamfer tool path uh, for that. Or I'll uh, I'll show you how to create kind of, if you don't have 10.5 uh, in the chamfer tool path, I'll show you how to create a kind of a tool path for a miter cut. Mark uh, asked what the carving time is on that. Uh, we'll we'll uh, look at that as soon as it calculates. But while that's calculating, uh, let me go into VCar Pro. I want to show you how to create a miter cut toolpath using the chamfer tool or using the um, using the chamfer tool or the uh, uh another just a straight tool path give me just a quick second here And uh, I'm just going to create a uh, 20 by 20 is fine just for this example. Uh, let's create a board here. Uh, let's go three inches tall. Uh, we'll go 12 inches long. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. Now, there are two ways that you could create a molding toolpath. All right. Number one is you can use the new chamfer toolpath in the Vetric 10.5 software um, uh, to create a chamfer cut. Now, I want to create a line um, for my chamfer cut. Now, this line here, um, based on what, what V-bit that I'm using and everything, based on my distance and stuff, uh, I need to make sure this line is positioned in the right spot. So let's look at here on that line if i'm starting uh start depth is zero i'm going from the top down and i'm using a 90 degree 90 degree uh bit um, my cut width and my cut depth i'm going to change that cut depth this is a three quarter inch board so i'm going to change it to 0.75 and that means my cut width is three quarters right um, and so I need to move that line back three quarters of an inch. Uh, let's move it back. Move 
relative, negative 0.75, click apply. Uh, so that way, you know, uh, my miter gets on my 12 inch board. Um, now the arrows represent the uh, deepest parts of the cut, the direction of the cut and the deepest parts. Uh, so uh, we've got that and let's turn off that color. Now let's create the profile cut. Profile toolpath, uh, cutting on the outside of the line, three quarters of an inch deep, uh, quarter inch end mill. Calculate. Hopes. Preview that toolpath. Okay. So we have that miter cut with that chamfer. Okay. So that's one way. Now, what if you don't have 10.5? Uh, and um, by the way, on that chamfer cut, it is a zero start depth. I'm using a 90 degree V bit. Uh, it is an inside chamfer type sloping downward. Inside sloping downward. So cutting from the inside out. Okay. Um, and everything. So inside downward. And my cut depth is three quarters, right? So that's, you know, to create the miter. Now, let's imagine that we don't have the chamfer tool path and we have to manually do this cut. Well, let's look at this from a side view. So uh, three quarters of an inch. Okay. And let me draw out a 90 degree. Oops. <clears throat> let me draw out a 90 degree V bit. Now, for my V bit, it's quite big. Let me uh, let me get this uh, in a half inch cutting height. Bear with me a second. Uh, height point two point five. Okay, use my trim tool, trim that away and that away. Delete that rectangle. Okay, more realistic. Okay, now on our 90 degree V bits, generally they have a little 16th of an inch, you know, kind of uh, straight leg here, you know, on those half inch heads and everything. Let's join that as one vector. Okay, now, when I, you son of a gun, move, move, okay, I can't exceed whatever my cutting height is on my blade, okay, uh, otherwise I get into a straight edge and it screws the miter up, right, so I'm going to need to step down down to a certain height and then I'm going to need to step over and cut the next height and step over and cut the next height right all the way until my miter is done so uh, looking at this uh, let's draw a line here and let's move that line back I'm going to move relative negative three quarters we know it's three quarters uh, negative point Seven five. Okay, and so on my V bit here, you know, when I come down, let's say I go, you know, let's say I don't want to, you know, get into my straight edge. Maybe I go right down to it, right? I could go right down to it as long as I'm pretty darn sure of myself, right? Uh, I kind of like to step it down, so uh, you know, so it steps down and over, but whatever uh you know depth it's cutting um what i need to do is let's draw a second bit control not draw but copy right 
get on to this line and let me select this and move this down to there okay so with this bit it would be kind of two passes right it would be carving down to here and then carving down to here for those two passes and there's a little bit of an overlap well i need to know kind of where that overlap is right so i have to take my line tool and i'm gonna hold down the control key and i'll snap a line uh there and these are going to be my two profile cut vectors. Uh, we can get rid of the 90 degree bits now. These are going to be my two profile cuts. So I can come in here and I could say I want to cut from 0 to, uh, let's say, uh, a quarter of an inch. I don't know what the cutter height is. Find out what your cutter height is, right? Uh, and it's going to be on that line and I want to cut let's look at where our start point is it's here So I want to cut on the left side of the line the arrows going pointing down So this is the left side. This is the right side It looks confusing because I'm pointing to the left over here and the right over here But we got to think about the direction that line is traveling from the start point. It's traveling down So this is the left side. So for this line, I want to be on the inside left of the cut and I want to use my 90 degree V bit. Okay, so 90 degree V bit. Okay, now I need that line transferred up here, right? So these two lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snap them to there so I know where this line goes. I'm going to delete that short line because I've already got a long one. This one, what am I going to do? I'm going to extend it out. Hold that shift key and just extend it out to here, to there. And uh, ooh, I overshot that. Okay, so that'll be my two vectors. But this line here is going to be my first cut with my 90 degree V bit. Calculate. Reset that preview. Let's go ahead and do the profile toolpath to cut this part out. So for preview purposes, oh, you son of a gun. Hold on a second. Uh, reset. Profile cut. So you can visualize this. Okay, this is the without a chamfering toolpath, and we got to do it manually. We have to set up our two vectors for our two cuts. Our first cut is going to cut from zero down to a quarter of an inch. Okay. Our second toolpath is going to be a profile cut, cutting on the inside left of the line. Uh, it's going to start, and I always go a little shy of two quarters, but let's go, let's start it at a quarter and cut another quarter. Now, we, get, we would do this three times because I'm only cutting a quarter inch deep. If I went three eighths, if I did have a three eighths inch cutter blade before it went into the straight, fine. I could do it in two cuts, but uh, I'm doing it in one. I know I showed it in uh, two cuts here, but I went deeper, right? You get the idea. It would be three step overs. So I'm going to go from a quarter down a quarter on that second line. Okay. And preview that selected tool path. Oops. You bugger. I need to be... Did I cut out? Let me see where my start point is. My start point is still up there. Left side of the cut. Left inside but I need to be, uh, it's got a half inch head, so I need to step back. I think it's a quarter of an inch. Oops. Okay, let's reset that preview. One more time, preview the visible toolpath. And then we'll get back to our model and then we're gonna wrap up for the night. 
Okay, so preview the visible toolpath. All right, let me look at my side view here. Okay, I stepped back too far. I stepped back too far. That step back should have been an eighth of an inch. Once I find the correct step over, then uh, we can um, draw our lines in the appropriate place. Preview the visible toolpath. Let's go ahead and I think it's an eighth inch. Um, oh, why am I missing it? I'm missing my mark here. I'm overshooting my mark. Bear with me a second. Let me take this bit. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Snap there, create a guideline, quarter of an inch up. Uh, that's positive, so 0.25. Okay. And so the right side of the bit, that cuts down a quarter. Then, bear with me. Relative guide, negative a quarter. Okay, my line spacing, bear with me a moment. It cuts on the right side of the line. So from here to here, quarter of an inch. Laney, don't be an idiot. You know that. All right, so from here to here, I'm way too far out. Ah. All right, let's move on. Let's get on. Let's get on. Um, align to the center. Move. Move. Trying to show you something easy and making it look hard. Uh, X axis 0.25 up. You son of a gun. Point two five. And then let's do that again. Control C, Control V. And let's move that one 0.25. Click apply. All right. So one more time on this toolpath, cutting from zero to a quarter of an inch. This toolpath. Uh, no offset allowance. It's cutting from a quarter of an inch down a quarter of an inch. Okay. Uh, and make sure that we select that line. Calculate that toolpath. And then on this line. Did I have both of those lines selected? Calculate. All right. And then my third line here. That's going to be another profile tool path. Cutting down, starting at a half inch, cutting down another quarter for that three quarters. Calculate. Lord have mercy. Uh, preview the selected tool paths. Okay. Let me reset the preview and get rid of that hump. Reset the preview. This better work. Otherwise, I'm going to be mad at myself. Uh, preview the selected tool. Do I have a step over still? Bear with me. Nothing. Good. Nothing. Good. Okay, just making sure I don't have no step overs. Preview the visible tool path. And then we got to move on. Woo! Lord have mercy. 
Okay, that's what it should look like. It should look pretty like that. So we step over three times and down three cuts. So if you don't have the chamfer tool path, you need to cut a miter, 90 degree V bit. Your lines uh, are stepping back about three quarters of an inch. And then you are stepping over a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch for that quarter inch depth cut. So zero to a quarter, quarter to a half, half to three quarters, right? But in the tool pass, it reads zero to a quarter, quarter down another quarter for a total of a half inch deep cut and a half inch start depth to another quarter for a total of three quarter inch deep cut. Okay, cool. So that's how you would create a miter cut if you do not have the chamfer tool path. If you have a chamfer tool path, draw a line back for a three quarter inch board, three quarters inch back and create a inside cut with your 90 degree V bit, three quarters of an inch down, inside sloping downward. All right. <laughs> no, you're not going to miles for Excel and sandwiches. I'll get you. I'll get you. We can have. We can have some like ultimate subs. Now, egg salad sounds good. I haven't had an egg salad sandwich in a while. That was yummy. All right. Let's close out of this. Okay. Let's go back to our spire here for a minute. All right. Let's reset our preview and preview our visible tool pass on this. I don't have it animating, so. Uh, to try to save some time, we'll just see the finished result. And uh, there you go. I have a big daddy fish. You got a one inch 90 degree V bit. So there you go. So that gives you a, a little bit less step over that you'll have to do. But think about from the point to the height where that bit goes into here. That's your cutting height, right? Not your, not your overall diameter, but your cutting height. How deep can you cut before it gets into that little straightaway or whatever? You know? Shoo, doggy, that was tough. I screwed us up on the lines. I was off on my two lines and everything because I should have laid it out like it was supposed to. Three cuts going a quarter inch deep. You divide three quarters by three and it's a quarter inch. Um, just wasn't thinking. But yes, to answer your question, Big Daddy Fish, this board could be created as a two-sided job. You could create your vectors where you need. You could flip it over and create that chamfer cut to cut those parts out. Right? Um, but uh, I'm going to use my table saw. Let's go ahead and do one final cut path on this. So the final cut path on this, we're going to turn off this line and this line. Okay. We're going to do our profile cut, cutting all the way through the material on the outside of the line. Uh, I've only got a 3 16 inch cutting space there, so my quarter inch bit is too big for that 3 16 inch space. So I'll use my quarter inch end mill. And um, we will calculate that tool path. Preview the visible tool path. Okay. And uh, let's get rid of our waste on the ends. Our waste in the middle is already gone. And so now imagine this being miter cut. Miter cut and uh, I'd use a, uh, I need a smaller V bit or smaller ball nose to get better detail on that model. But our four corners of our box would have that decorative element. Then we would have our front little medallion or our back medallion. Um, now imagine, if you will, for you woodworkers out there. Okay, imagine, if you will, for you woodworkers out there. Imagine if uh, your material was thick enough and you bought one of those locking lock mechanisms where it takes a key right in the front. 
you could split this model and move one to one side, one to the other, so you can create that opening where that key would go and you would have a decorative kind of like a little that shape on the uh, outside of the key, right? For you woodworkers that can do mortise and tenons, uh, mortises and you know where it slips, that key opening slips down into the back of that and all that good stuff. You're all woodworkers and uh, you know that form of fashion, but you know that's chisel work and all that stuff. You know, um, yeah. So, uh, smaller ball nose bit to get better cleanup. I got a bunch of tool marks there that I don't like, but you know, think about that for your box feet and sides. Um, the last thing. is I'm going to do so I'm going to take this foot shape right here and I'm going to size it three inches tall just for uh, shit sake right and I'm going to put a profile here. In this, I'm going to turn off all of the shapes. Oops, not that one. Let me turn all these off. Bear with me a second. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Oh, you son of a gun. wish there was like a button that I could click that these are like all these uncheck 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 two more one two all right let's go ahead and on our model here Let's go ahead and uh, create a 3D finish cut just on this visible model here, using the model as the boundary. And then we're gonna call it a night. Thanks, Troy. Um, they look offset. Who says they look offset? They look offset. Uh, Blue Knight, who, what looks offset? What looks offset? Tell me what looks offset, and we'll go back and look at it um, after this toolpath calculates. Calculate. It's getting there. What looks offset, Blue Knight? You're throwing me off, man. Nothing was offset. We'll go back and look at it. As soon as this calculates. Oh, hurry up. Calculation. All right, guys and girls. The split corners. I don't know, Bruce. We'll look at that. Oh, wait. I'm being an idiot. I'm being an idiot. I'm being an idiot. Um... Selected vector is a boundary. Let's do uh, let's do it for time sake wise. Um, let's select this really quick mirror. Uh, let's flip it. Let's move this over. All right, I'm gonna select these two parts. 
use the selected vector, calculate that visible model on those two selected vectors. Get a boy, get a boy. You can do it. You can do it. Just make it a little bit faster. Turn to the derm. In another class, I'll show you guys and girls how to add decorative swirls and stuff to your models on your feet. We'll model these feet up actually uh, and everything. Uh, let's reset that preview. We'll come back to that preview in just a moment. Uh, but let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath on that model. Okay, and let's go ahead and profile cut those two shapes out. Profile, calculate, preview, visible toolpath, get rid of our waste here. Okay, now this is just, uh, you know, they've got that subtle curve to them, but you can miter cut them. Yes, if you want to go make them straight on this end, go ahead and do that, uh, you know, uh, for the miter cut, it doesn't have that decorative. Doesn't have to have that decorative shape. We've already discussed that on the other feet. Um, but now, on this, if I were modeling this part, if I turn off this model, if I was modeling this component right here with you know the decorative swirl and everything. Uh, we've got to draw some vectors in, so we'll do a vector here to here. Uh, let's do another one from here to here. Uh, let's make this rectangle a little bit bigger. Uh, down here. Swirls. So let's take a circle and let's draw a circle here. Make it a little bit bigger. smaller okay uh, let's take a another circle let's hold down the control key we'll drag this down here size it down All right, I'm just gonna get general in general general uh, area here. Okay, let's go ahead and select this. Hold down our shift key and our control key, and make another circle kind of in here. Same thing on this one. All right, curve tool. So we're going to uh, come in here. Uh, space bar to finish. 
node edit. Let me clean this up and make it look a little prettier. Uh, what we're trying to, <laughs> let me grab a reference photo because I done forgot what that swirl looked like. Uh, right here. Don't be a pain in the butt. Right here. Okay. All right, circle, smaller inner circle. This line is gonna follow that curve. This line is gonna be another profile of that curve. Okay, wonderful. All right, let's go back and um, we've got this line here. That's gonna kind of be the bottom curve. We need this top curve to match it. Um, yeah, yeah, it matches it. That's what I thought. Okay, let's take this line in node editing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the vector right here for a moment. Come down here. I'm gonna cut the vector let's cut it up here. There. I'm going to offset that line outward. Oh, let's go, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. The other way, inward. Uh, let's go a little bit more. Three eighths, point three seven five. That will work. All right, node editing. Oh, I hate all those nodes. It would be easier if I just drew the curve. All right, so I wanna clean up these nodes and get rid of a lot of them. So I'm gonna use the curve fit tool and I want Bezier curve. Uh, I want a tight tolerance. Let's go 10 thousandths of an inch preview and narrow it down to those three nodes. Okay. This one here, I'll do the same thing, narrow that down. So that way I don't have all those dang nodes to deal with. So now in node editing mode, I've only got those three to deal with now instead of those million. All right. So I want to pull this out a little bit and down to the natural. That'll work. Up here, I want to come in and there's going to be a swirl in here. So I need to make this circle a little bit bigger. Let's go about like that. All right, let's take this curve and let's pull it down. Two there. Uh, let's take this circle here and let's try to get it somewhat into that shape. All right, now I want this to, uh, let's do, let's work down here a little bit first. Uh, this line would actually continue on. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Node editing. Bear with me while I fix my curve. Let's insert a point here. Work with me. Work with me, Junior. <clears throat> All right, it's not gonna be pretty, but 
we don't have all night to spend on this. We only got like three more minutes. Okay, so I need this uh, swirl. It's gonna come around and it's gonna close off on itself. So I need this circle to come down and kind of taper into here. So what I do want is I want a little bit more of a natural roll. Ooh, you son of a gun. Uh, I want to turn off the smoothing there for a minute. I want a little bit more of a natural roll here, which means something like that. And uh, we're going to cut the vector. We'll give ourselves some room. We're going to cut the vector here. Did I delete a span? Control Z. Yep, cut the vector. Okay. So I want to pull this down. And uh, let's see, I want it to spiral into a point. So I got to add another line. This guy will come here. This line's coming out here. This line's coming into, let's go right there and cut that vector. We'll just cut it there. And let's bring this down to there and pull that up a little bit more. Okay, it's not going to be the prettiest swirl, but we'll get her. Okay, let's do some trimming. Our scissor tool, let's trim this away. Trim this away. Trim this away. Okay. Uh, up here, let's do the same thing. This is going to come around and... It's going to connect into here. So node editing, let's cut this here. Let's cut this one here. And bring these two points together and bring this back. It's going to be a Bezier curve, not an arc. Don't make it look lopsided, Laney. Oh, Lord. Okay, use our scissor tool. Trim, 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 trim. Okay, let's close that. Okay, let's connect all these vectors. So join, uh, still got two of them, that means I have an overlap and I know where that overlap is because I saw it, it's right here. Node editing. Delete that span. Okay, join with a smooth curve, there we go. Oh, you son of a gun. Bear with me, guys. What is happening there? Okay, sorry. All right, let's go to join. One open vector, it's still open. Where is it open at? Uh, bear with me a minute. It looks rough over here. We gotta fix that. We'll fix that in a second. But where is this open at? Right here. 
I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little overlap right there. Node editing. Okie dokie. All right, while I'm here, let me just fix this screw up. Uh, not too bad. All right, done. Here's the last few minutes of class. Let's get this somewhat into position. Okay, um, on this, I'm going to uh, do some trimming. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim this here and there to get rid of that. I'm gonna trim this here, here, and there. What I want to do is I'm going to uh, basically create a outer profile that follows this curve right here. So I'm going to um, copy this, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to move this for a moment. Oops, you son of a gun. On this here. Bear with me. Okay. Control C, Control V to copy and paste. I'm going to move that copy out of the way just for a moment uh, up here. I'm going to take this copy and I'm going to trim that away. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, basically, this needs to come, you know, and connect around there. My swirl is going to sit on this. I don't need this shape to be like that. So I'm going to go into node editing. Oh, we'll be done here in just a second. Uh, we're going to, let's cut the vector here. Cut the vector here. And delete that. Let's delete this span right here. Okay, I got a little jog right there, but that's fine. I'm gonna use my extend tool. Oh, you son of a gun. I'm gonna use my extend tool and I'm gonna extend from here to here just to create that shape. Okay. This should now be one closed vector, but it's not. Where is it open at? Um, all right, node editing will tell me where my start and end point is right here. That's where it's open. I can always find an open vector. If I can't find it by looking at it, I can look for the green node and I can find where that problem is. Uh, I can always uh, track it down that way. Uh, Cause generally a, there'll be a green node where there's a cut and an opening. Okay, now that I have that uh, as a closed vector, great. Holy jamoli. This is supposed to be not too long. It's six minutes long. Uh, I'm going to move this back into a position. Okay, let's back it up just a little bit. Okay, close enough. All right, let's create some shapes here uh, very quickly. On this outside profile, it's going to be, oops. <clears throat> insert a new level. Creating a whole new component. So insert a new level. All right, on that level, we're gonna create a shape. This initial profile is going to be a flat shape. It's going to be uh, hell, let's go, uh, three eighths inches tall. Uh, let's go 0.3 inches tall. 
Okay, on the base height, flat shape. Always make sure. See what happens when you get in a rush? Join. Okay. One more time. Shape tool under modeling, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to create a shape of 0.3 inches tall. We're going to click apply to create that shape. Thanks for hanging out with me. Holy crap. Uh, shouldn't take this long to uh, explain something. Sorry about that. Um, from here, I don't know why I closed that tool. Let's open it back up again. Okay, we're going to select this shape here, our spiral. Let's go ahead and give that a little bit of a curve, a rounded curve to it. Uh, I'm gonna stick with a 60 degree and I'm gonna go with no base height on it unless I determine it needs some base height. Now, notice on this here, uh, it doesn't give me an apply button. That means there's a problem with this vector. All right, so what I need to do is I need to go into my join tool and make sure that it's closed. It's open right now, I need to join it to close it. So now I can go back to the shape tool. Wow, sorry guys and girls, this was supposed to be something quick and simple. And we can create that shape. All right, let's go into 3D view here. Now, on that shape, I may want to Give it a little bit of base height and a little less curve. Probably would have bring my swirl in a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter right here so I didn't have these big voids there, but you guys get the idea. Uh, let's go with a 30 degree curve, but a 16th of an inch base height. Uh, 45 degree curve, come on. Give me a little bit of curve. Probably would have brought that swirl around just a little bit tighter. Okay, that's good. Uh, start a new component. Select this rectangle, this first one right here, and this bottom one down here, they're gonna be the same Height, it's going to be a flat shape, uh, and we're going to go uh, point five. <clears throat> okay, uh, start a new component, this rectangle here. is going to be a flat shape or we could make it like a bead let's make it uh let's make it like a bead uh and 45 we'll click apply okay let's look at our model so far it looks weird because everything is added, 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 not merging like it's supposed to. So what we're going to do is let's come in here and on our components, we want a combined mode of merge. Okay, on this component, we want a combined mode of merge. Okay, looking at, whoa, 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 where are you going here? Looking at this, uh, that is sticking out too far. So let me come back to that one and go into the properties and let me reduce that height down some. I want to go to 0.375, put a decimal in there, Laney, a decimal. Don't, don't. 
Come on. <laughs> Come on. Point three seven five. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take this and we're going to these three models or these four models here. Uh, hold down the shift key. We're going to select this one first. At last, I'm going to bake them as one. Okay, I'm going to take this profile here and I'm going to select the model, the baked model, and I'm going to clear outside of the selected component to get rid of everything that's outside of it. Okay, so I have that foot there. I could have given this flat one a little bit of a curvature, right? Some body, but we're just kind of just creating a basic foot. My swirl could be a little bit tighter coming around here. Take some time, you know, draw things however you want. Uh, but that clearing just, you know, cut out the shape of that model there. And so long story short, you know, you can model some decorative feet, right? So, um, the one thing, the last thing I'd like to do is I'm going to take that baked model and I'm going to add a little bit of a draft to it. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of a draft uh, to some of these components and stuff, those flats. I'm going to go, uh, let's go uh, 21. 21's fine. Let that draft come in and then we'll get out of here. Holy camole, I keep saying we'll get out of here, but we're going to get out of here because viewership is dropping off. If you like this so far, give me a thumbs up. I know it was a complicated little class or a topic, but I'm trying to just give you some general ideas on what you can do with the molding tool path to create some feet and body. Uh, we didn't get a chance to create the lid. I wanted to be able to create the lid. Um, uh, but uh, draw a profile rectangle and use that molding profile just like we did on this long narrow rectangle do the same thing on a bigger rectangle for your lid you can create some decorative stuff there uh we'll just focus on the box body today we'll i'll throw the lid into next week's beginning of next week class or something um let this create all those edges and everything that 21 degree uh draft Sorry. And then we'll uh, clean it up by deleting everything outside of its original profile shape. And that'll just give us our draft on these flat areas here. Kind of a nice slant. Uh, thanks, uh, Jim. I appreciate that. And just me, I appreciate that. Uh, so we're just kind of creating my swirl could be much better. I could, I could bring that curve in a little bit more tighter and make it a little bit more tighter in there. Um, you know, in here, I could bring that in and just create, get rid of some of that big void there, wrap that around a little bit tighter and stuff. All right. So looking at our model here, basically what that draft has done is it's created this, this little bit of angular, uh, to everything, right? Well, I don't want the angle on the outside. I just wanted it on the straight pieces. Let me see if I can turn this. Oh my God, work with me. There we go. So just wanted to create a little bit of an angular on these parts here, a little bit of draft. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that drafted model select this outer profile again and I'm going to clear outside of that selected area oops select your model too and I want to clear outside that area cut all that rest all that waste off 
And uh, so that what that leaves me with is um, my drafted, just the inside areas here, you know, the draft where I want it. Uh, let's take and smooth this model. Smooth up some of, you know, the rough looking of it. And then we're done. We're really, really done done because it's already 1017. Oh my goodness. So on the smoothing. Uh, we don't need it that much. We're going to just back it off a little bit. So we just get some nice smooth. Uh, like on our edges here and on our swirl. Uh, and I don't know why it wants to spin that way. But uh, that would be, you know, a foot or a left side of a foot. Or it could be uh, the design on a box, right? Uh, or whatever the case may be. Um, but we're modeling. I'm sorry I get so frantic at the night when I run over. I, I, it's already a long class as it is, three hours. You guys holding your attention that long? That's awesome that I can do that for you. But, uh, you know, when we get too far, it's like, Okay, we've gone past the close. We can continue this later. All right, everybody. Hopefully you picked up something from that, whether it be, um, you know, creating some decorative boxes using just general shapes. Uh, we didn't get a chance to create kind of a little apron. We didn't get a chance to create a lid. So, so far all we've got is kind of the box and the body, the body and the feet that we can kind of work with and stuff. But we didn't get to finish it off. We didn't get to maybe turn it into a two-sided project flip it over and create the groove where the bottom of the box goes in uh, or, you know, on the lid, you know, cut the hinge, you know, tool pass and things like that. We don't have that kind of time. So we're just going to leave this on using the molding tool path and modeling and see what you can do with molding, what you can do with modeling and how, you know, even though you don't have a spire, you can still do a lot of this with that molding tool path. Right? We can create feet. We can create really decorative bodies and all just with that molding toolpath. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me. Good night.